In this lecture, we continue with a discussion on the Perl language. Now, uh, if you recall, we had already discussed the concept of variables, expressions, how the expressions are evaluated in Perl. We talked about arrays and we talked about a few other string manipulation features that are available in Perl. Now, in the present lecture, we would first start with looking at a couple of very interesting and important string functions followed by something which is considered to be one of the most powerful features of Perl, namely regular expressions. Okay. So, we start by looking at some of the very interesting string functions. Well, the first function is called split. Split as the name implies is used to split a given string into multiple pieces using a specified delimiter. What this means is that given a string there are certain delimiters some defined delimiters it can be a colon it can be a space they this particular delimiter is existing in several different points in the string and the whole string will be cut at the locations of the delimiters and the pieces that you get after the cutting it is formed as a list. So, the result of a split is a list of elements. Okay. So, split breaks up a string into multiple pieces and creates a list. Let us take a small illustrative example. Suppose I have a list like this red, blue, green, white 255 separated by some character colon. The whole thing is a list. Now, you look at this assignment, we have assigned this string to a variable dollar underscore. Well, we could have used any conventional variable names, but we have chosen to use the dollar underscore character. Now, dollar underscore has a particular significance. Dollar underscore is some kind of a default variable in Perl. See, suppose you assign it to a variable say dollar abc, then whenever you want to refer to the string, you should mention the name of the string dollar abc. But this dollar underscore which is considered to be the default, if you use it in a string, in many operations you will see that it is not required to specify the name of the string. By default, it will be considered or it will be assumed that the string is stored in the special variable dollar underscore. Okay. So, in this example, we have considered that dollar underscore is the place where you are storing the string. Let us look at the next statement. The right hand side uses split. Split is the function followed by a slash. After slash you have the delimiter, in this case it is a colon and again a slash. So, between the two slashes you have the delimiter. This is the basic syntax. Now, here you give a comma you give dollar underscore means from which string you are trying to split. So, if it is if it is dollar underscore then the second parameter is optional, but here we have explicitly mentioned split slash the delimiter again a slash comma the name of the string. So, after the split is executed the splitted values will get stored in the array called details. So, the values will be red, blue, green, white and 255. Now, in the next statement for each details. Now, if you look at the syntax of for each as we had seen earlier, we had used it as follows for each name of a scalar variable, then within parenthesis name of the array. But here we have dropped the name of the scalar variable. By default, the scalar variable will be taken as dollar underscore. Okay. So, you see this for each at the rate detail. So, these elements will be accessed from the array one at a time, they will be stored in the variable dollar underscore and in the body of the loop you are printing the value of dollar underscore with a new line. 
so basically this program will print the values of the different components of the string which are separated by colon. Let us take another example, here the string contains a name, an email address and a telephone number, they are separated by blanks. Now, instead of a array variable name on the left, I can also specify a list of scalar variable names like dollar name, dollar email, dollar phone. So, when I execute a split on a blank, okay, a split on a blank from dollar underscore, then the three values will be extracted and they will be stored in name, email and phone. Now, we will see some examples, some practical examples of the split function when we use Perl for writing CGI scripts, this, should, this we shall be looking at our next lecture. Now, you understand when a form is submitted, assuming it is a post method or get method also the same thing will be there, the data which is coming to us, it is coming as name value pairs, name equal to value, ampersand name equal to value and so on. So, what logically we need to do at the first step, we need to split the whole string with respect to ampersand, so that the individual name value pairs get extracted. Now, with respect to each of the individual name value pairs, we can further split with respect to equal. So, the name and the value will get separated out. So, this is one practical example of split which we shall see later. Join is like the reverse of split. Join is used to concatenate or connect several elements together into a single string. Well, here also you can specify a delimiter. So, when the strings are concatenated, the delimiter is automatically put in between. Normal string concatenation is a blind concatenation, whatever is the content of the string, they are put side by side. But here you are putting a special marker in between the strings when you are putting them or concatenating them together. Like an example here, the first example join the first parameter after join is the specified delimiter, within quote I give a space, then the names of the variables. So, the six variables will get concatenated whatever they contain with a space in between. The second example shows two things, that instead of a single variable, the delimiter can be any character string containing multiple character. For example, here a double colon, this is my delimiter. So, here I have asked to join several different items and the point to note is that one of the items is a is an array. So, when the new string is constructed, the elements of the array a, b, c will be expanded and the whole thing taken at the, together including the components of the array they will be concatenated and the double colon delimiter will be put between each pair of them, consecutive pairs. Okay. Fine. Now, let us have a look at Perl regular expressions. As I mentioned at the very beginning, regular expression is one of the most useful features in Perl. Regular expression sometimes in short we call reg ex regular expression. Now, the first question is what is a regular expression? Regular expression is basically you can say it is a way or it is a method to specify a character string. It is a very powerful method to specify a string depending on, on our need the string may be arbitrarily complex as we shall see. Basically, it refers to a pattern of string pattern that of course, will follow some rules. The pattern has to be specified following some rules which are guided by the syntax of the language. Regular expression is nothing but a character string as I had said which is actually a chunk of text. This is an extremely powerful way as we shall see to specify string patterns because sometimes 
we need to search for something in a string. Well, simple string searching we have seen using the eq less than equal greater than this kind of operations, we can compare two strings. But sometimes we may need to search whether a particular element belongs to the string or not and this condition may become arbitrarily complex as we shall see. Let us first start with a simple example that how regular expressions help us in making a program simpler. This is a program which has been written without using regular expression. See, this starts with a variable found initialized to 0. There is a character string hello good morning everybody that is stored in the variable dollar underscore. And what we are trying to do in this program is, we want to search for a word every which we are storing in another variable search. Now, the program is as follows, for each word, see we have given written only split here. See split only, writing split means number 1, see means if you look at the usage of split we had shown earlier, there are two things we are specifying after, after split. Within forward slashes, we are specifying the delimiter with respect to which we have to split. Secondly, after a comma, we are specifying from which string we need to split out. Now, here the string is the default string dollar underscore. So, we did not specify it, it is optional. And secondly, there is another optional thing in split, which I did not mention earlier that if the delimiter is a space that is the default case, we need not specify that also. You simply mention split that will take care of everything. It means that you are splitting the string dollar underscore with respect to space. Okay. So, within bracket the condition is only split. So, you are splitting the string it becomes hello good morning every day there are four elements and the four elements will get split it in a list and the list, the elements of the list will be assigned to the variable word in every iteration. Now, within the loop you are checking if word is equal to search, then you are setting the flag found to 1 and you are immediately exiting the loop by last because you have already found it. Okay? Otherwise, you go on iterating till you find or do not find. So, after you come out of the for each loop, you check the flag whether it is 0 or 1. If it is true, then you print a message that you have found out the word. Now, the same program, this program has been written without using regular expression. The same program, if you use regular expression, it becomes so small. Just try to understand what this means. First line as usual, this is the string you are defining. In the if statement, the condition says, well this we will explain in detail, this actually means, if this means in English, if the string every appears in dollar underscore, then print. This we can write in a single if statement in a single line. You can understand this kind of a facility gives Perl its power. This is an example of a regular expression. See, within this forward slashes I am writing every, this is a simple example of a regular expression. And this equal to tilde, this is an operator which means you search, you are searching if the string specified in the right hand side is present in the string on the left hand side. So, you can see this is extremely easy to use. As I had mentioned, the text between the forward slashes this defines the regular expression and here we are using equal to tilde to check if it is present, okay, this one. Now, as an alternative we can use exclamation sign tilde which means the negation of the condition. This means that the pattern is not present in the string. So, in, in place of equal to tilde if I write this exclamation tilde, this would mean that if the string every is not present in dollar underscore then print something. Okay. So, whether you want 
the truth value of the of the condition checked in the if statement to be whether the string is present or not present we can use either equal to tilde or or exclamation sign tilde okay so the example that we had seen that is an example of literal text literal text means within forward slashes we are specifying a simple text to be searched for this is the simplest possible form of regular expression. Some text enclosed in forward slashes you give and that you can search whether it is present or not. There are something to remember here that when you are performing the match, okay, all the characters in the string are considered to be significant. This you must remember. All the character means this includes punctuation symbols like comma, semicolon, dots and also spaces. For example, in the previous example if you give within forward slash every followed by a blank then the match condition will not be true because if you look at the previous example the string contained every body. So, there was no space after every okay, b was immediately after it. So, if you write like this then there will be no match. Let us look at another example. The string dollar underscore contains welcome to IIT Kharagpur students. Here in the first case we are checking you see within slash we are checking IIT K blank K. See this is a default check again if I want to search in dollar underscore we need not have to specify anything just in the if condition if we specify the regular expression in slash Perl will interpret it that well this is the regular expression and we need to search if this is present in the default string dollar underscore. So, everything is specified in this simple thing within brackets. Okay. So, if you write like this we need not have to ex explicitly specify that uh, that equal to tilde okay, or not equal to tilde just within slashes you write iit blank k if it is true then you print iit k is present in this string. Now, here actually iit k is present okay, iit k was there. Now, the second if statement says if Kharagpur blank students this is the whole regular expression then print something, but here you see Kharagpur blank students will not match because what is present in the string is Kharagpur comma blank students and it said that comma is significant if you do not compare with the comma the match will not return true. Okay. Fine. Now, broadly the types of regular expression can be categorized as matching and substitution. In the matching case, or means here basically you are matching a string against a substring. You are checking if a given string contains a substring. The example that we had shown earlier was an example of matching. Now, for matching, we use the symbol m as we shall see with some examples, but this m is optional if forward slash is used as the delimiter. In the previous examples we are using forward slash that is why we did not use this m. Okay, we will see some example that means when this m is necessary. In the second type substitution we can replace a substring by another substring in a given string. For substitution we use the symbol s. Okay. So, we will see through examples. First, let us look at matching. Matching as we have seen can be specified by the equal to tilde operator. This operator tells Perl to apply the regular expression on the right to the string value specified on the left. The regular expression that to specify should be contained within delimiters. I as I mentioned again I am mentioning forward slash 
is the default delimiter. If the default delimiter is there, you need not specify anything else, but instead of slash, if you are trying to use some other delimiter, then a preceding m is essential. All right. Let us see how. Let us take this small example. Let us define a string good day and store in a string dollar string. In this if statement, we are checking if string matching m slash day slash m is the symbol for matching as mentioned print match successful. As an alternate form, I can omit this m also. Since we are using forward slash as the delimiter, whether or not you use m, it does not make any difference. Both forms are same or equivalent in this case. But if you are using some other delimiter, not slash like this example shows, here the string is same, but instead of slash, we are using a delimiter at the rate. Now, this m is mandatory, it is essential. The symbol that immediately follows m that is identified as the delimiter. And similarly, that same symbol will appear at the end to mark the end of the string, end of the matching string. Now, this is typically used whenever the symbol forward slash also appears as part of the matching string. Otherwise, normally we do not want to change the default delimiter. Okay. There is another example where the opening square bracket is used as the delimiter. Okay. So, this you are checking for d a y d. Both these forms are equivalent again. In the first case, we have used at the rate. Second case, we have used the opening parenthesis as the delimiter. Okay. There is something called character class. In character class, we use square brackets to specify any value in the list of possible values. Whenever something is specified within square brackets, it means any one of these values. Let us take an example. First line says string equal to some test string 1, 2, 3, 4, this is the string. Well, you look at this keyword my at the beginning, this is something we are using new here, we did not use this. This my keyword specifies that this is something like a local variable. Okay. You know the concept of local and global variables in other programming languages like C or Java. Local means with only within the body of this particular procedure, the value will be accessible. If you are having a separate procedure or a subroutine, you cannot access it from there. Okay. Well, look at this if statement. If dollar string matches, look at this within slash, we give a character class within square brackets, we mention 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This means, if the given string contains any one of these digits, then the if condition will be true. So, it will search the string from left. See here at the first one, it will find a match. Okay. So, it will print it found a number. So, this if condition will return true. The second if condition, it checks whether any one of A, E, I, O, U is present. Then it prints found a vowel. Here, the match will occur here, some, this O in sum. The third example shows a case string equal to again 0 to 9 A, B, C, D, E, F. Well, if you find any one of these strings, you can say that found a hexadecimal digit, hex digit. Just some example. So, so within square bracket, you can specify certain list of characters. So, if any one of them matches, you say that the match returns true. Okay. Now, just one point to note, this 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, these are consecutive values. There is a short form also, you can write 0 dash 9. This also you can write within square bracket, instead of writing so many symbols. Negation of character class is also possible. 
if we use the correct symbol at the beginning of the character class, this will mean any single element that is not one of these values. Let us again take an example. So, again this string is given, we are checking if string matches well a i o u this vowel with a caret at the beginning. This means that the match will be returning true if none of these symbols appear in the string or the first symbol you get is none of these because, because it always tries to find out the first match. Now, if it is a negation it will get a match in the first symbol itself s because s is not one of these right. So, it will return a match in the first symbol position itself and it will print the message. Okay. So, in this examples you just note one thing that it is trying to find out the first match it can get in the string all right not trying to determine all the matches in the string. Okay. There are some abbreviations or pattern abbreviations you can use in specifying more complex regular expression. A simple dot, dot means any single character except new line. So, if there is a dot in a regular expression, it means it can represent any character. So, if you write within slash C A dot, then it can be C A T cat, C A D cad, anything, okay. dot can represent anything. Reverse slash D means a digit, which is the same as within square bracket 0 to 9. Small w means a word, that means it is a digit or an alphabet. This, this, these are called a word character, it is an alphanumeric character. Reverse slash S is a space character, space character means tab, space, enter, carriage return, line fit, this kind of characters. But if you use this D, W and S in upper case, it represents the negated condition. Capital D means not a digit, capital W means not a word and capital S means not a space character. Okay. So, you remember this. Okay. Let us look at this example. You have a string here, good and bad days. Here, you are trying to compare something slash d dot dot s. d is a character, s is a character, two dots in between. Dots can match any single character, that is what I have said. So, this will match this d a y s days d dot dot s. Okay. So, it will match out here. Let us look the second case. Within the forward slashes, we have given w, 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 then a space character. So, there are four alphanumeric character followed by a space character. The first match that will occur here is here g double o d, g double o d followed by a space. Okay. So, it will print found a four letter word. So, these are some slightly more complex way of specifying regular expressions. There is something called anchors, which sometimes we need to specify when you are talking about a regular expression. Sometimes when you specify some search condition, that means we want to search for a word, we may need to specify that well search for something which is appearing at the beginning of the string, search for something at the end of the string, search for something which is located at some word boundary something like this. So, these anchors are used specifically for this purpose. Okay. So, there are three ways to define the anchor. We can use the caret symbol, caret means beginning of the string, anchors to the beginning of the string, dollar means end of the string and reverse slash b means to a word boundary. Word boundary means if you have a string like this good day, then this space is considered to be the word boundary. Okay. So, the match will take place starting from a boundary, such a boundary. Okay, some examples are here. First example, if dollar string 
match within slash caret slash w slash w means a word character an alphanumeric caret means beginning so what we are saying that the string must begin with a word character caret means we are anchoring at the beginning then slash w means a word character this means we are checking if the string is beginning with an alphanumeric character ok fine the next one if string match slash d dollar d means digit dollar is the anchor at the end so we are checking if the string is ending with a digit the last character of the string is a digit or not ok the third example it is a slightly complex condition there is a slash b here there is a slash b here with good in between and this entire thing is enclosed within forward slash this actually represents that there must be a word boundary followed by good there must be another word boundary which means you try to find out whether good appears as a word in the string word not a substring because good can follow something together but there has to be a space or a delimiter after that it is appearing as a separate word ok so this if condition checks whether good appears as a word in the string or not ok multipliers are another important thing where we sometimes specify repeated values well we may we may want to check something like this that a string which begins with a character after that it can contain any number of alphanumeric digits but should end with a digit this how do we specify there are some multiplier characters we can use for that there are three such characters we can use star star means zero or more occurrences plus means at least once one or more occurrences question mark means zero or exactly one occurrence so in a string we can use this symbol to make the regular expression more powerful let us look at some examples first one this says within slash caret means beginning of the string beginning a word plus which means the string must begin with a word and there must be at least one character after that because plus means one or more characters ok so it must begin with a character followed by at least one more character so so it should not be a single character string ok the second example it starts with a digit followed by a question mark the question mark can be zero or more ok so it is either a single digit or a digit followed by some other character ok the third one a word boundary followed by a character then as many number of characters after that followed by a space again as many number of characters after that so in this way you can specify any complex kind of condition there is some other um, complex condition mentioned here so the whatever you want to specify using a combination of these symbols we had mentioned we can specify that in the form of a regular expression it can be arbitrary complex ok fine the next important operation that Perl supports you can do in Perl is something called substitution because we want to match characters but sometimes we also want to modify something in a string that is substituting a part of a string by something else ok let us see how we can do this ok basic usage of the substitution mechanism we have mentioned is by using the s character and the general syntax looks like this on the left hand side you will be having some variable where this will refer to some string dollar new is a string this is an operator equal to tilde but if it if it is an 
s after that this means a substitution s slash some pattern to match I have just written like this, but here actually the pattern will be appearing in the form of a regular expression again a slash new pattern well here again you can specify this as a regular expression slash closed. So, this one what this will do is that it will be looking for the specified pattern to match in the given string specified in the left hand side and if it is found it will replace the string with the new pattern okay, whatever is mentioned here. Now, the point to note is that if you give the substitution like this then only the first occurrence of the string pattern to match will be substituted only the first occurrence will be replaced. However, we will see that there is a method to replace all the occurrences if you put a g at the end g means global then you can replace all the occurrences of the string by the other string which we will see with examples. Let us see the first example assigns a string like this to a variable x y z the first one says substitute Lakshman by Bharat. So, here the new string will become Ram and Bharat went to the forest, but if you give something like this what does the right hand side specify right hand side specify the first argument is a regular expression it says the first character is R okay, then a word plus means one or more occurrences followed by a you see that the first such match will take place here because you have a r it ends with a you have this word character this a is that word and plus means one or more this m is here one or more occurrence okay so rama rama matches this regular expression so, this Rama will be replaced by Bharat in this example. So, now the string will become Bharat and Lakshman into the forest. If you look at the last one, here substitute the first one says A E I O U within square bracket that means any one of these slash I. So, you search the string for the occurrence of a vowel the first occurrence R A M A this A is the first occurrence replace it by I. So, Rama will become Rima R I M A okay. this will be the effect of the thir this, this third substitution. Now, here we have another example here the string is a year has 11 months in the first substitution example we have substituted what a digit followed by one or more characters by 12. Now, in this case the first match here will be this a digit followed by one or more characters. Similarly, the last one see this string contains a new line the last one shows an example where the new line is, is removed from the string this specifies new line dollar this dollar anchor means from the end of the string if there is a new line you replace it with by nothing there are two slashes one after the other. So, replace the new line by nothing means you actually delete the new line. So, this is one way to remove the new line from the end of a string. Okay. So, just to recall you can do the same thing using the chomp function, but this is another way of doing that. Okay. There are a couple of command uh, uh, you can say modifiers which can modify the meaning of a match or a substitution one is slash i which is used to indicate that we are doing case insensitive matching case can be ignored that means we do not make any distinction between lower case and upper case by default Perl is case sensitive it considers small a and capital a to be different but but we can make it ignore case by giving the slash i and slash g as I mentioned before if you give this then it will match or substitute all occurrences of the substring. So, some small examples here 
the first one says Ram and Shyam are very honest, this is a string. In this if statement, we are making a match, this R A M is all capital, but we have followed it with the I, Ram slash I. This means, you are mentioning that you make this match ignoring the case. So, this Ram and this Ram, the match will be successful, although some letters are lower case here and some letters are upper case here. So, this match will be successful and this string will be printed. In the second example, you see here we have given substitute the letter m by the letter j followed by slash g, g means global all occurrences. This means you substitute all occurrences of m by j. So, m in the string in ram there is one, in sham there is one. So, after this execution ram will become raj and sham will become shiaz, ram and shiaz are very honest, okay. this will be the resulting string. Now, in regular expressions we can memorize a few things, okay. we can use parenthesis to capture a piece of match text which you can use in later comparisons. Like we are making some, some kind of matching now, we want to use the result of that matching in a next statement or somewhere a little later. So, using this concept of memory we can we can use this kind of a feature. So, the basic idea is that Perl memorizes the match text and you can have in general multiple sets of parentheses to memorize multiple things. Well, we will see some examples to illustrate how this work. The first thing is that how to recall the captured text because whatever you specify in parentheses will be remembered this is what we had said. There are two ways you use reverse slash 1, 2 or 3, if you are wanting to use the match text while you are inside the regular expression itself, the same regular expression, then you use slash 1, slash 2 or slash 3. But if you have finished the regular expression and you are outside it and still you are wanting to use the last value matches, then you use dollar 1, dollar 2, dollar 3 if it is after the regular expression. Okay. Let us take some example. There is a string Raman Shyam are honest. The first example you see, here is a match. Here we are matching caret means from the beginning of the string within bracket, okay. word followed by one or more characters. Now, here the first or the or the smallest substring where this match will occur is R and A okay, here. And since it is in bracket this R and A will be remembered and if later on we print this is outside the regular expression. Okay. If I give dollar 1 then that match value will be printed right. Let us take the second example. Here again within bracket we give word plus dollar. So, from the end there must be a word character and at least one or more character. So, the smallest string is S and T out here. So, here again we give dollar 1. So, this S T will print here and this new line. Now, the third example is a case where we are using multiple parentheses. You see from the beginning of the string this caret a word followed by one or more character, followed by a space, followed by one or more character this plus, again word followed by one or more character. Now, if you print this, the first one will print Ram, the second one will print this, there is a space, this space will come out this plus minimum will be this a and word followed by this plus typically it will take up to the end of the string. So, ram, nd, sham are honest, this is what will be printed. Okay, fine. There is another example which shows you that use of the values within the regular expression itself. So, again the same string, 
you look at this comparison within bracket a word followed by slash 1 slash 1 means the, the last match this means that whatever was matched the same thing appears immediately after that okay so on this string if you make this kind of a comparison this will become true out here there are two o's appearing one after the other right there is a word character followed by the same thing this means this the next example tells you there is a, that is a word character followed by one or more followed by a dot at least one more character star zero or more followed by this match that means this checks whether the same thing repeats more than one time okay this is a this is a way to check whether this particular string is repeating the last one is a method to swap two things say here you are substituting word one or more and word one or more substitute it with dollar two and dollar one this you are outside the regular expression the slash is ended that is why you are using dollar so the first match should be ram the next match should be sham should be replaced by sham and ram okay so now the new string will be sham and ram are very poor okay now some examples where where we are trying to validate some user inputs we will see that how this can be used well here basically what you are trying to do is small code then a prompt is displayed where the user is asked to enter the age and if and if the user wants to exit user will type q so the user enters the age from the standard input this is a local variable that's why i used my i am removing the new line character by chomp we are exiting if age equal to q from the beginning q and that means q is the only character in the line it has an anchor at the beginning also at the uh, also has an anchor at the end and i means you can you can type in small q or capital q ignore case right after that you check if age if you have a capital d means not a digit you have read something but if there is any non digit character there then you print that it is a non number you have entered something wrongly so it is one simple example let's take another example suppose we have a file of text there are two columns first column contains name second column contain age and between name and age there will be some spaces just assume for the timing that this name if there is space they are included within double quotes okay fine uh, there can be blank lines or commented lines starting with hash also so we want to validate this kind of file whether the data is more or less correct or not firstly we are opening the file suppose so here you assume that the file name was there in dollar file we are writing if we are not writing the whole one this is already there so the file handle is in die if it cannot open we print error message in a while loop while loop we are going through the file contents line by line the first line we are reading okay dollar line equal to this file handling in we are removing the new line character from the end of the line we are skipping this particular loop next means skipping the loop and go to the next iteration if s line slash star dollar means it is a blank line the whole line is a blank or slash star hash means it is starting with a hash so if either of this is true that means this is either a blank line or a comment line you can skip it but otherwise you take this name and age and split split with uh, means uh, the name and age with respect to space it can be one or more space that's why we are giving plus from line then you can print a report the age of name is age so that by looking at the printed report you can check whether you have entered the data correctly or not fine 
Now, some special variables uh, in Perl worth mentioning. There are three such special variables. Dollar ampersand means the string matched by the last successful pattern match. Dollar reverse quote means the string preceding whatever was matched by the last successful match. Dollar forward quote means the string following whatever was matched in the last successful match. That means in a string, if you get a match here, we are talking about the preceding string and the following string. There are three things. Let us take an example to illustrate. Suppose I have a string a b c d f g h i. We are making a match. Well, since the default string, we can simply write d e f. We are checking for d e f. So, match has occurred out here in d e f. We are printing dollar slash c. Uh, since this quote is a special character, that is why we are escaping it with the reverse slash character. Actually, it is dollar slash dollar ampersand dollar forward slash. So, in the first case, it refers to the preceding string. So, whatever there was before the match string a b c that will be printed followed by a colon, then dollar ampersand means the present match, dollar forward quote means whatever is there after the match g h i. So, this means these. So, actually the first one represents something called pre match whatever was before there represent the present match, the exact substring where match occurred and this represents whatever is after that. Uh, so, with this we come to the end of today's lecture on our discussion on Perl. We shall be continuing our discussion on Perl next week. There are several other things to discuss, but before that let us go through the questions from last week's quizzes. How to sort the elements of an array in the numerical order? Well, this we have mentioned by using this special construct in the sort, we can do that. Write a Perl program segment to sort an array in the descending order. Well, directly you cannot sort in descending order, you first sort in ascending order, then you reverse the entire array. Okay? In this in two steps you can do. What is the difference between the functions chop and chomp? Chop removes the last character in a string irrespective of what character it is. Chomp will do the same thing, but only if the last character is the new line. Okay. Write a Perl program segment to read a text file input txt and generate as output another file out dot txt, where a line number precedes all the lines. Okay, so, you are basically reading lines from one file, outputting it to another file, you are putting a number colon then the line, that is how you are outputting it. So, the program will look like this, first you open the input file with error messages, open the output file, greater than means output, again error message, while INP means you are reading the lines one by one from the INP, by default it goes to dollar underscore, then you are printing out dollar dot is a special variable again, this represents the line number, okay. this represents the line number. Line number gets printed colon then the contents of the line, this will repeat throughout the while loop and finally, you close the files. How does Perl check if the result of a relation expression is true or false? Well, only the values 0, undef and empty string are considered false, all else everything else is true. For comparison what is the difference between LT and this less than symbol? LT we use to compare strings, less than we use to compare numbers. What is the significance of the file handle argv? It reads the names of the files from the command line and opens them all, that means all the files will be read line by line and the lines will be returned in sequence. How can we exit a loop in Perl based on some condition? Using the last keyword like last followed by a condition. Now, some questions from today's class. Show an example illustrating the split function. Write a Perl code segment to join three strings a, b and c separated by the delimiter string this one. What is the difference between equal to tilde and exclamation tilde? 
is it possible to change the forward slash delimiter while specifying a regular expression if so how write Perl code segment to search for the presence of a vowel and a consonant in a given string that means there is actually two questions you search for a vowel you search for a consonant how to do that how do you specify a regular expression indicating a word preceding and following a space and starting with b so the word has a preceding space as a following space it starts with b ends with d with the letter a somewhere in between write a perl command to replace all occurrences of the string bad to good in a given string the last question is same but not in a string you have to replace it in a given file okay so with this uh, there are a couple of other questions write a perl command to exchange the first two words starting with a vowel in a given character string you find out two such words and then you exchange them and what are the meanings of the three special variables as I have just mentioned. Uh, in our next class we will be talking about uh, something called associative arrays in Perl and we shall be actually looking at some real CGI scripts if you want to write it in Perl how do you do it. And so with this we come to the end of today's lecture thank you. Uh, in this lecture we would be first looking at some more additional features of the language Perl then we shall see how we can use Perl to write or develop CGI scripts with the help of some examples. So first let us see about something which is called associative arrays in Perl. Now we have already seen or we have already talked about the conventional or normal arrays or lists an array is just a collection of list items which can be accessed element wise. Now you have seen that an array is basically a collection of items which can be accessed by specifying the index of an item in the list. The index starts with 0 so I can say the array number uh, array element number 0 element number 1 element number 2 and so on. Now as the name associative implies associative means we are trying to access by content. If you recall what an associative memory is an associative memory is something which you do not access by specifying an address rather you specify the contents and try to search whether there is any memory location with that content present. So an associative array conceptually is very similar it is an array where the primary mode of accessing is by specifying the value of an element rather than the index of the element in the array. 